This is going to be an example of how to use decomposition. So I'm starting with the algorithm here. So we're going to take as input a relation I'm going to refer to as R0 uh, and a set of functional dependencies I'm going to refer to as S0. And our output I'm going to put into a collection called O. And what's actually going to end up in that collection is the individual um, decomposed relations. So as you'll see in this example, there's actually going to end up being three that are going to be decomposed relations that are going to be derived from what we give in relation zero, which is going to be the entire relation before we break it apart. So these relations that we're going to uh, output as, as O are also going to be in Boyce cod normal form, all of them. All right, so that is the, uh, the goal here. That's what we're going to get to. So the process by which we're going to do is we're first going to look at relation zero. And if we can determine that everything in relation zero is in Boyce cod normal form, looking at the functional dependencies that were given uh, in S, then we're done. And there's nothing more to do. Uh, we, can, we can move on. Uh, if not, now we're going to dive into the algorithm. Obviously, we're going to be doing that. Um, but eventually, we will hit that end, right? So uh, at this point now, the first thing we're going to do is take the first violation of Vo Boyce cod normal form for the, um, the functional dependency. Uh, and for that functional dependency, I'm going to refer to that first violation functional dependency here as, as y is dependent on x. Um, we're going to compute the closure for x, um, and then we're going to create uh, two new relations based on that. So the first one is going to be defined as the closure of x. The second one is going to be defined as x, which is basically the attribute that we're going to be joining these two things on, and whatever's left over. So the attributes that did not make it into the X closure, because if you think about it, that is the reason why it's violating normal form, right? So we're now out of this one relation, we're now going to have two. Now we also need to break up the relations um, functional dependencies. So we're also going to create sets S1 and S2, and then we're going to put the functional dependencies that are specific to those relations in those sets. Um, at this point now, we're going to reevaluate our two new relations and see if they satisfy Boyce cod normal form just like we did for R0 in the beginning. So this is where we repeat. Now at this point, if both of these things were good and, and satisfied Boyce cod normal form, we are done. If not, we'll be breaking them down as we did uh, in the algorithm that we just described. So let's see it in action, all right? So we're going to work through it with this data. So this is right out of the book too, so uh, please you know, read through that and watch this as many times as you need to to kind of make sense of this. I really, really, really encourage you to try it yourself. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and just start scribbling this down. Um, it gets you more used to the notation and it gets you more used to the logic behind it. There are examples in the book as well uh, after the section. So please do look at that. All right. So R0 initially is title, year, studio name, president, and president address. Um, the set of functional dependencies we have, there's three of them. There's title, year, uh, studio name. There's president being dependent on studio name. And then there's president address being uh, dependent on president. So those are our three functional dependencies and our relation zero. So this is our input data, right? So if you look back up here, we've satisfied what we, we declared up top as our input R0 and S0. They're right there. Now, step one is we're going to compute the closure. Now. I'm going to go through these steps a little bit quickly. Uh, do remember that we talked about how to compute a closure um, in a previous talk, so go revisit that if, if you're not feeling comfortable with this. Um, but I'm going to take the kind of uh, privileged leap to, to start with the closure I know is going to be the correct one. We talked also about you know the algorithm of how you would kind of work through 
um, the combination of attributes to find um, a key and preferably a minimal one. Um, but I'm going to start with this one because I know this one represents a key, right? So in this case, title and year is going to be a key for this whole relation. So I'm going to compute the closure of title and year. Remember to do that, I take title and year themselves as the attributes that are input to that algorithm. You have to forgive me here because now remember I'm talking about the algorithm to compute a closure inside of the algorithm to uh, do decomposition. So just understand here that these steps I'm talking about right now are for closure, not for this, right? Not for this. All right, so I'm going to take title and year as the first attributes in my result set. Uh, then I'm going to look at my set of functional dependencies and I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, look at my, my whole set of, of um, the relation and see uh, what ones uh, satisfy the functional dependencies there. So title and year um, are both in my, uh, my result here. So I can then add studio name. Right, so that first one there can go through. Uh, studio name now is also in the result set, so I can add president. President is in the result set, so I can add president address. So there you go. So we got all of them. They're all in there, and that makes our closure for title and year being our key. Now, using our key, we can check to see if our functional dependencies are voice code normal form. Remember, this means that the left side of every non-trivial functional dependency must contain a key. So first of all, non-trivial, remember, let's rewind to that. Non-trivial means that the right side has attributes that are different from the left, right? So um, if, for example, our second functional dependency here was stu studio name is dependent on studio name, that would be a trivial functional dependency. That, that is not one that we're concerned with because it's obviously fine. Um, however, uh, president uh, being uh, dependent on studio name, it is not okay. And the reason why is that our, our key, which remember is our closure of title and year, is not contained on the left-hand side. So the first one is fine. It contains the key. The second two are not. These are not voice cod normal form. So now we know that there's something we must do to fix it what do we do? So let's kind of move forward from there. So step two now is to take the first non voice cod normal form functional dependency. So in our case, we're going to use uh, president being dependent on studio name and compute the closure of X, which is going to be the, the left side of that. So studio name. So we compute the closure of studio name. Uh, studio names closure, uh, we can look at that through the eyes of the functional dependencies, just like we did before, right? So closure algorithm, you put the attribute you're testing for, the key you're testing for into the result set. Then you test it against your functional dependencies. So studio name uh, does not apply to the first one. The second one does give us president, so we get to put president in there. So now our results set has studio name and president. And then our third one ha can now go in there because we have president in the result set. So president address can also rejoin our result set. So the closure for studio name is the, the set of studio name, president, and president address. Um, so now that is our new uh, closure for this one. Now, uh, part of step two is also to create the individual relation. So now that we have uh, that closure, we need to break it up into individual pieces. So the way that we do that is we first take, the first one is just going to be the closure of X. So everything that we just determined, uh, studio name, president, and president address. The second one is going to be X because that's the one that we're joining them on. And everything that did not make it into the closure of X, now this comes from the original set. So that is studio name, title, and year. So now we have two relations, relation one and relation two. So at step three now, we can compute, we have to compute our functional dependencies for our broken up relations. It's no longer one piece anymore, and we have to figure out which functional dependencies went with the right one. Now this is pretty straightforward. Uh, relation one, you can bring across all the functional dependencies that work with relation one and relation two 
uh, the same. That's pretty straightforward. If you look at what's in relation one, we have studio name, president, and president address. And if you look at the original functional dependencies here, you can see that studio name, uh, president being dependent on studio name, and studio or president being um, or president address being dependent on president are the ones that should come across here. And in fact, they are. Um, now the other one then uh, is just title year and studio name. And if you look at um, the functional dependencies here with the result set, sorry, left over, that makes sense. Uh, studio name is dependent on title and year from R2, and that would come across as um, the set two of functional dependencies, even though there's only one functional dependency in there. So we now at this point have computed uh, two relations from the original and two sets of functional dependencies that go along with those two relations. We've broken up the original into the two pieces. Step four now is to determine um, which of these functional dependencies are in Boyce-Codd normal form. R2 is, right? If we look at R2 here, uh, we have studio name being dependent on title year. And if we look at R2, we can see that that is in fact the key and that is fine. So we are good there and we can go ahead and add um, that one right into O, which remember is going to be our output because that one is done. However, we have to check R1. R1, now we have a problem. R1 is not in uh, Boyce Cod normal form for one of its functional dependencies, right? So if we look at the two functional dependencies, we have president and president address. So president address is dependent on president. This means that we have to now repeat the process because if you look at our key, our key is not president, right? Our key is studio name. So the first functional dependency in that set, studio president being dependent on studio name is fine, but the second one is not. Studio name is nowhere in the mix there and definitely not on the left-hand side. So now we have something else we have to break apart. So now we're gonna go through the process again, but this time only for R1, R2 is done. R2 is in the output set. So R1 now, is just to kind of level set and bring us back to what's left, so to speak, um, leaving out everything that's in the output. We have studio name, president, and president address. The functional dependencies that are left, the set of S1 is president being dependent on studio name and president address being dependent on president. Now, we have to compute the what is our x in this point because remember it's the president address being dependent on president that is causing us the problem so president is our x so we have to compute the functional dependency of that x which is president i'm sorry compute the closure of uh the x which is president so we take president and obviously we put president in because that's the first attribute that we're passing in to test for a key and then we check our functional dependencies here. Uh, studio name is not, not part of it, um, but president does give us president address, so we can put that in our closure. So now we have our president closure. Um, at this point now, we repeat breaking it up into the two sets. Remember, we take that closure itself, and that becomes the first set, which in this case is R2. I'm just keeping R1 because we, we you know move past that. Um, and now R3 is, remember, X, which is president, and whatever was not in that closure, which is studio name, from the original set R1, right? Not the original set R0, okay? So now we have another breaking up, broken up piece. So we have R2 and R3. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to compute um, S2 and S3, we're going to compute the functional dependencies for these, right? So again, these just kind of go right in line with um, the broken up relations. So for S2, we're going to have uh, president address being dependent on president. And for S3, we're going to have president being dependent on studio name. Now, at this point, everything is in Boyce Cod normal form. We can add it to our output collection, which is great. So our output collection now has three relations. It has a relation that consists of studio name, title, and year. It has one that has president and president address. And it has one that has studio name and president. 
These are now the three individual relations that are all Boyce-Codd normal form compliant.